Okay, welcome everybody to the second part of the first week's lectures. And, um, okay, let's go over here. So, we spoke about organizational preliminaries. Now, let's have an introduction to cognitive psychology. Okay, so, psychology. Suppose you are at a party. Not really likely at the moment, but maybe just the image of it is nice and fulfilling. Um, and you are there, and you, you have your drink and everything, and then this gorgeous guy, girl, whatever, walks up to you and starts chatting to you. And he says, oh, hey, what are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm studying psychology. And he's, oh, that's interesting. What actually is psychology? And you want to appear really cool and, and well-informed, so you now have to tell him a definition of psychology. And so I would like to ask you to just take a moment now and think, in this situation, well, how would you define psychology? Okay, so of course, as always, there are many definitions of psychology, but a very common and widely accepted one is that psychology is the study of mental processes and behavior. So, of course, you told him exactly, or her, like that, and um, then he says, oh, cool, that's really interesting, so what kind of modules do you take? You say, because, you know, you're like nervous, so the first thing which pops into your mind is to say cognitive psychology instead of clinical or whatever. And so he says, okay, what's cognitive psychology? I think I've heard of that before. And now you have to try to find a definition for cognitive psychology. What would you answer him or her? Okay, a very widely accepted definition of cognitive psychology is it's the study of mental processes. Okay, if you paid attention and have a little bit of short-term memory, you will remember that the definition of psychology was the study of mental processes and behavior, and cognitive psychology is the study of mental processes. This already shows how central cognitive psychology really is in the field of psychology. It's already half of the definition of the term itself. So what are these mental processes we are looking at? It's stuff like attention, learning and memory, language, emotions, and many more. We will see quite a few of them. And because of this central role of cognitive psychology, it's really something, a field, which interacts with most other fields. And you can see it's cognitive psychology has informed social psychology and clinical psychology. So it's, it's really reciprocal that these work hand in hand, forensic psychology, developmental psychology. In developmental, you, you probably have seen, is it last term or maybe this term in parallel, that there's quite a bit of overlap. So in developmental, you, you speak a lot about the development of cognitive processes. But also in social psychology, how many names can we remember? How can we process group structure in our working memory and things like that? Um, how much mental effort does it cost to lie to people? Things like that. In clinical psychology, well, what is a normal attention span? What is not normal and people have problems with attention and things like that? So even if cognitive psychology is not your primary interest and not the reason why you studied psychology in the first place, I would say it's really worthwhile to still properly follow this lecture and learn this stuff because it's, it pops up in so many different aspects and so many other areas. And it's very likely that whatever you do later on, if you pursue a career in psychology, that at one point or the other, you will rely back on knowledge you have learned in cognitive psychology. Okay, so let's have an example of topics, things, processes we look at in uh, cognitive psychology. First one is perception. Now, we know this traffic sign, don't we? 
even if you don't drive. You probably know that it shows a person shoveling something away, a little bit of soil or sand or something. Now, if you get this additional information that it's a man struggling with umbrella, our percept suddenly changes and we see this as the, the top of the screen and this as uh, the, the, the base where you hold it of the umbrella. So how can it be that just telling something changes our perception that we see something? That's something we will look at in a later lecture. Or take this advertisement from Audi, the all new Audi A3. There are essential elements of the letters missing, but still we perceive them. And we are able to read that text. How is that possible? Again, something we will look at in detail later. Another example is attention. And here I would like to uh, show a little example video of uh, movie mistakes. And you probably heard that many times that in movies there are actually often a lot of mistakes in there, but we somehow miss them. So let's have a look at a couple of them. I hope it all works. Um, Okay, lean back and enjoy. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. The original 1977 film is littered with mistakes. One such mistake occurs when Obi-Wan and Luke enter the Mos Eisley spaceport and trick the stormtroopers into letting them in by using the Force. You don't need to see his identification. One particular stormtrooper, who is standing behind their vehicle, suddenly disappears in an instant. He's there in one shot and completely gone in the next. Given that we don't believe he possessed magical powers, that's an error. What? You're far too trusty. The Goonies. Ah, the Goonies. So quintessentially 80s, and a throwback to the years when kids could still be kids. But enough of all that mushy, sentimental, nostalgic stuff. We're here to point out a silly mistake that occurred before the movie had even properly started. During the opening credits, when we're introduced to Jonathan K. Hui Kwan's data, the young inventor is seen testing out a new gadget. He fires a sucker at a trash can, which is full of trash, and is inadvertently dragged towards it before falling in. However, when he falls in, it has suddenly become empty. Self-emptying trash cans? <laughs> Whatever next. Despicable Me. One of the finest animated movies to ever hit cinemas, 2010's Despicable Me contains a plethora of memorable scenes, one of which takes place in an amusement park, when Gru is reluctantly persuaded into going there by his adoptive daughters. A mistake occurs in this particular scene when Gru and the girls ride on a roller coaster. When Gru gets onto the roller coaster, the cart he gets in clearly has a pink safety bar on it. However, when he exits the cart after the ride has come to an end, the safety bar has completely disappeared. Unless he tore it off in sheer terror during the ride, that wasn't meant to be the case. Captain America Civil Okay, let's stop here with this example. And again, the question is, how can it be that we, with our sophisticated visual system, that where we have the perception impression we perceive everything that we miss so obvious things and I mean they are on a huge screen in a movie theater and we still don't recognize them. Okay another example is memory and these are again slides from a later lecture where we'll see um, in eyewitness testimony how easy is it to induce wrong memories where we think well I do remember what I saw really what happens if we do some small manipulations and try to fool people. Further example is language. Try to read that sentence. I have to say this is a proper English correct sentence. It's not wrong or very unusual or something. The way it has to be read is the boat is manned by the old people. So the old men go into the boat. The old people go into the boat. Most people struggle and read it and think, well, now that's wrong and have to go back and reparse the sentence. Again, in the topic of language, we will look at sentences like that and see why does it go wrong? Where does it go wrong? How does our reading operate and function? Okay, these are just some examples of the processes we are looking at in cognitive psychology. So, it's, again, the definition. The study of mental processes, or you can also say mental functions. This is kind of synonymous 
of that. And these mental functions, as I already said, are the main ones, are basically things we can do with our mind, such as attention, learning, memory, language, emotions, these are the key topics, and a couple more we will look at here. For instance, problem solving, social cognition. We will have lectures on those as well. Now, cognitive psychology is a rather young discipline within psychology, and the first textbook in cognitive psychology was written by Neisser in 1967. So this is, it is said that cognitive psychology came into being uh, in the late 1950s, early 1960s. It's that young, that such a young discipline. And Neisser, in his textbook, oh, I didn't want to do that, uh, defined cognition as the process by which the sensory input is transformed, reduced, elaborated, stored, recovered, and used. And those are a lot of big words, um, so let's have a look what does that actually mean. So sensory input is, for instance, what comes in into our eyes, what we see. So suppose you see these three shapes here on the screen. Now this input is transformed and reduced. Reduced means they all look very different, however we all in our mind recognize them as the letter K. So this is a reduction, a simplification of the input. And we can elaborate, it's, it's stored then in our short-term memory, or if it's important, also in our long-term memory, and we can work with that. So, for instance, I can take it away. Now, you still probably know what has been there on the screen. And I could ask you, which of the three letters most looked like handwriting? Now, you have to work with that information, you have to elaborate it, and first of all, have to recall from your long-term memory how does handwriting look like, and it does roughly like that, as an exemplar, as a prototypical thing. And then you may remember, yes, you have to recall now from your store that it was the middle letter. At some point, something went wrong with the fonts. This did look slightly different, more like handwriting at some point. So this is an example of how such an easy thing, like this task, which letter, you just look at letters, how many different cognitive processes were, are involved in that. And this is something we look at in, in much more detail. And this is something which fascinates me personally, to see this machinery in the mind. How does it work and support our absolutely every second of our day? And so many things we take for granted. How do they actually work? What's behind them? So, cognitive psychology. Is this really the study of internal mental processes, like attention, memory? Is that something which is just science stuff, or is there really any real-world application to it? Let's have a look at some examples. And, of course, I'm convinced of cognitive psychology, so I would say it's very relevant for everyday life. So, examples. Using your mobile phone while driving, you definitely should not do that. And in most countries, it's forbidden by law. And research into attention, what's the impact of divided attention, influenced and informed the policymakers who created these laws on phoning while driving, so that it's forbidden. Another example, very evident, is the research into long-term memory and learning. So, this has informed when people want to invite, in, introduce and uh, develop new techniques in learning for children, but also in learning in adults. They learn different to children, at least to some extent. The other example we already spoke about, the quality of eyewitness testimony and how can we improve that so that we can trust eyewitnesses more than before. And we are not necessarily saying they want to deceive us, but just, you know, that to know about the failures of memory and the weaknesses is important here. Another example is the research into language. 
So how do you write a text which is easy to understand, for instance, for elderly, for people from other countries where English is not the first and native language? You have to know about language processing to do something like that. And as a last example, um, it's the research into perception and short-term memory, which actually influences the design and enables improvements in human-computer interaction. And we all know how slick modern smartphones and computer interfaces are. And not too long ago, this is a screenshot, so to say, of Microsoft Windows. We are at version 10 now. This is how it looks at, looked at version 2 from the late 1980s. So you see how far we have gone here and cognitive psychology helped improve making these improvements. Okay, so these are the topics we will go through in our lectures. So this is the first lecture, introduction and a little bit of history, which we have seen. <clears throat> and then we go through perception next week. And here you can see the chapters in the Gobet textbook, which you should read to prepare for that lecture. So for today, it's chapters one and two. Next week is chapter four on perception. And to be honest, it's very straightforward. So the, this is basically the name of the chapter in the Gobe textbook, so it, it, it won't be too difficult. You will see that towards the end we always have two topics per lecture and you have to read two chapters, but don't worry, the chapters are at this place shorter, roughly half the length of those chapters of the more central core topics, and these are slightly less central topics, so they are covered a little bit shorter. So and, oh, this is a little bit outdated, sorry. The MSc Psychological Science students, you have this year four additional seminars on, I think, Wednesdays afternoons from 2 to 3 p.m. or something like that. It's all on your BBL page. I forgot to update this one. And they will be online seminars, and we will discuss there what we will do. And I will let you know on BBL. Okay, if you have any questions on this, um, best to do is post them in the uh, discussion forum on Blackboard Learn. Okay, thanks again for listening and then, as usual, do a good stretch at least, walk around a little bit, have a sip of your tea, have some water, maybe a bite to eat before directly going to the next bit. Okay, thanks for listening and see you soon. Bye-bye.